welcome to another great episode of Royal Black and Elite. I'm your lecturer and social historian, Lady Trinette Wilson. Each week, I try and bring you a great story covering the life of someone who has been royal, black, and elite as a way to present a different side of black history. And today I'm so excited because we're going to meet a man who's after really my own heart. He is an author himself. And he's one of the most unknown authors with the most well-known books in the world. Most importantly, he is one of the most well-known black authors ever. So I'm so excited to present this new person to you. But before I do, would you please press share? like and subscribe and leave me a comment. I want to know that you're enjoying these videos, what you'd like to learn about as we grow as a channel. Now, I want to introduce you to a prolific writer, a playwright. He wrote mysteries. He wrote, you know what, in fact, he is the leader of the whole adventure genre. His name, Alexandre Dumas Penny. Join me as we talk about this little known but great author. If you love Black Panther, Games of Thrones, or even murder mysteries, you can thank Alexandre Dumas. He was a mixed race French and black author who was born and raised into luxury despite his African heritage during a time of discrimination worldwide and slavery still in the U.S. Born on December 25, 1802, Alexandre was a truly a gift to the world. The author of The Count of Monte Cristo, The Three Musketeers, Robin Hood, and The Nutcracker Bad Lake. This black man is little known in America where his works are greatly lauded and loved. At some point throughout my education, I had heard of all these books and plays, but I had never known it was from the mind of a black man. Born in Picardy, France, to a French nobleman and reportedly an innkeeper's daughter, Dumas's African heritage actually originated with his grandfather, his father's father, beginning in Haiti. His father was a French nobleman, and his mother, whose name was Mary Cécile Dumas, was an African woman, thus the name Dumas. It is said that his father and mother lived together um, for some time, but in the end, his father sold his mother. But that's where his African origin came from. His father's station in life afforded him the finer things, if you will, and it opened the door to his literary career. His father secured Alexandre a writing apprenticeship with Louis Philippe Duke of Orleans. And he was writing plays and magazines and articles. So he was a, an apprentice and he began to write. And by 27, he had written three plays that went so well, he was able to write full time. So he didn't have to do it for money anymore. He did it because he loved it and he had already made a lot of money just on those three plays. During the time that Alexandria was writing, there was literary censorship in France. And once it lifted, Dumas began to write for himself. He began to write short stories and serials. And in 1829, he opened his own writing production studio where he employed other writers to produce work he submitted to newspapers, magazines, and every place. And so ghostwriting has been around for a long time. There was some argument, and Dumas even was taken to court uh, regarding some of his material. Though the man um, who he went to court with did not get the credit, Dumas did have to settle with him financially. But you'll have to read a little bit more about that story in my book, Royal Black and Elite. And thank you to everyone who's gone out and bought it so far. If you're enjoying this video, remember to press like, share, and subscribe. I want to thank everyone who's already gone out and purchased the book, and I hope that you're enjoying this one as we jump back in to the writing aristocrat, Alexandre Dumas. Or as we say in the U.S., Alexander Dumas. 
He and some of his friends, they wrote a book compiling all of the celebrated crimes in Europe between 1839 and 1841. In fact, he often wrote nonfiction books and fiction books. He even wrote a dictionary, uh, a culinary dictionary defining every food ever known to man. So his interest in writing really spanned over a lot of different subjects, but the adventure genre is where he really made his name. In 1840, Dumas married Ida Ferrier, and he also had a child, but he was known as a man about town. He was a member of the Freemasons, and it is said that weekly he would meet with the Masons to discuss current events and smoke hashish. In fact, his book, Count of the Monte Cristo, is filled with references of hashish. So this man was truly an adventurer himself. Now, although he and his wife were married, he did and was rumored to have over 40 affairs and also four children out of wedlock. So he was doing a little bit more than writing. His son, by the same name, was also a writer, but he never did reach the literary heights that his father did. But three years after he married Ida, that is when he began to write his greatest novels. Between 1844 and 1845, he wrote The Three Musketeers and The Count of Monte Cristo. He actually named his house Chateau Monte Cristo. He uh, loved his stuff and he loved himself and he spent a lot of money, um, which meant that he lost his home at one point in his life because of his, of his frivolous spending. In 1844, he wrote the Nutcracker Ballet, and in 1872, Robin Hood. He also wrote eight novels about Marie Antoinette. That was not the only royal he wrote about. He also wrote about the death of Alessandro de Medici. He was the first black duke in Italy. If you want to learn more, be sure to click on my links below to look at the video. Do you even know he wrote a short story called Captain Arena in 1842? Sound familiar, Captain America? Hard to believe this man's career started as a person who wrote for someone else to end up with 200 of his scripts being adapted to films and over 100 of his plays being played. I mean, he has done so much. One thing I want to say also is that at one time during Napoleon Bonaparte's rulership, he had to leave France and he traveled all around the world, but in particular Russia and Italy. And in Italy, he established a newspaper called La Independente. So he was, you know, all over the place and wherever he went, he wrote. And I think that's why he probably couldn't go back to France during that time because of he believed in free speech and writing what one felt. So I thought that was very interesting about Mr. Dumas. Now, of course, a man on this level has his fair share of gossip surrounding him. So we did talk about the children. We did talk about the um, writing. But if you want to know more, be sure, remember to go out and purchase Royal Black and Elite. That has all these stories and so much more that we hear, we talk here about on the channel. After living a very, very rich and fulfilled life, Mr. Dumas passed away on December the 5th, 1870, of natural causes at his home. Some say it was a heart attack, but his records say natural causes. His home is now actually open to the public. It's a museum, so if you're ever in the Paris area, make sure you stop by to see the great author Alexander Dumas' home. He is buried in a mausoleum at the Pantheon in Paris. But before he was buried there, because of his race, he was not allowed to be buried with the other illuminaries. I'm so glad they corrected that. And now he is buried with other literary greats and musicians. So um, I thought Mr. Dumas had a very interesting story. And if you did too, would you press like, subscribe, and share? Tell others about this great channel teaching about the other side of black history. I really appreciate you joining me always.
I can't wait to share our next upload with you. Remember, log on to www.nauep.com if you want to learn more about what we do here at Royal Black and Elite.